In this video, let's talk about some built-in middleware components. So we have been using different approaches to create middleware pipelines with uh, custom middleware components. That's not the only thing that is to be done at core as a framework of a developer to create an entire application. In fact, this shouldn't be the way. Right? We only need to create custom middlewares when we have in very special cases. The reason why I still teach the middleware pipelines and middleware components in SPNN Core is first of all, it is the base of the framework. The entire SPNN Core is based on middleware pipeline, or this type of pattern. Right? So I need to teach. Secondly, if you do have very special cases where you need to create a custom functionality that handles cross-cutting concerns. For example, you just want to create a very special logging mechanism that works within your application and you want to put it somewhere, then creating a custom middleware could be a really good choice. But in most cases, there are built-in middlewares that help you to do everything that the web application needs to do, right? So those functionalities I already mentioned in one of the first classes here. So we have routing mechanism, we have authentication, authorization, model binding validation, all of these, they have specific middlewares to help us. So if you search on middleware in SB Online Core, you will see this article in Microsoft, learn.microsoft.com, SB Online Core middleware. And if you scroll down, so there's middleware order. And this diagram here shows us the typical built-in middleware we can use to create a SPDNI Core MVC applications or Razor Pages applications. And in fact, most of the middleware also apply to minimal, minimal API applications. And on this diagram here, you can see custom middleware that is placed right here. In fact, I think if you do have special cases, it's possible that you apply your custom middleware at any place. It doesn't have to be after authorization. It is just that in most cases, when you create custom middlewares, most likely it's going to be after the authorization and before the endpoint handler. It's most likely placed at this place. And then you see we have exception handlers, HSTS, HTTPs, S redirections, all of these are built-in middlewares. And it's very easy to add this to the pipeline. For example, if you want to add the HTTPS redirection or the routing or course, let's jump back into Visual Studio. And just after we build the application here, if I say app dot use HTTPS redirection, then it means that I'm putting this middleware right here, right? It's just one line of code. What about routing? So we can say just use routing and we put the routing middleware right here. The custom logic is coded inside this function. So this is the extension method, right? Inside this method. So go over here to the definition and you can see that this is an extension method here, static class, static method, and applies to the application builder interface, right? And then there's logic over here. If you want to look into that, use routing, what about course, we also mentioned course. So we have the course middleware as well. So just one line of code, you can add the middleware right here. And then later, I'm going to talk about configuring these middlewares. And that's all I want to mention in this video. So there is a certain order of this. In fact, this order follows the diagram that I presented right here. Routing authentication authorization, model binding, model validations. All of this is right here. You don't see model validation, but that's part of another pipeline, which also I'm going to talk about it when I talk about MVC or minimum API. So yeah, that's everything I want to cover in this video. If any questions, please let me know.